All right. Hello and welcome. Uh, this is lesson seven of course one, which is called Flipping, Writing, and Sticking to the Script. And today we're going to be talking about the last pivot, and that is the action pivot. And so we are going to talk about what it takes to commit to taking action. The first uh, thing that we're doing today is our writing prompt. And the writing prompt today is my least favorite thing about myself or my least favorite part about myself. And so this one always reminds me of those interview questions that you get where you need to talk about your weaknesses and you know, we're, we tend to highlight all the positive things about ourselves and not talk as much about the less positive things about ourselves. But when it comes to doing values work and committing to values-based action, it's really important to dig down deep and be self-reflective and identify what those things are that you truly struggle with. So rather than continuing to try to push them out and push them away, you are able to focus more on um, how to stick to the plan and continue taking steps in the right direction um, with those things rather than, rather than trying to leave them behind. Because as we've talked about a lot, you can't leave them behind. They're a part of you. They'll always be a part of you. And it's important to just accept that and accept them, carry those passengers on the bus with you and keep, keep on trucking. So for me, what I really started to think about with this writing prompt was about, you know, my least favorite part about myself is that I have continuously throughout my life allowed fear to control my decision making. And so, um, you know, there's that song about letting the uh, fear take the wheel and steer. I really, truly feel like that has has been where I've lived uh, for a significant portion of my life. Um, and so, you know, even though from the outside perspective, um, I would act in a way that May, led others to believe that I was, you know, everything was calm and cool and I was totally collected. That really wasn't how I felt inside. And I really haven't, you know, wasn't able to fully live the life that I, um, that I wanted to live um, because of that fear. Um, so frequently I would find myself, you know, when faced with something that I wanted to do or I felt passionately about, um, you know, I, would frequently, you know, get that, get that uprising of fear, get that, you know, welling up inside of me and, um, which led to action or inaction related to second guessing myself, hesitating, um, and just not doing, not doing the things that I wanted to do because I was, you know, I wanted to just get, get away from that and escape that painful feeling, um, that, you know, the physiological response of fear, um, it's uncomfortable. It's really, really uncomfortable physically. And so, you know, my brain and my, my brain, uh, engaged in actions or initiated actions that you know, moved me, tried to move me away from that. <clears throat> I also kind of, you know, throughout my life, because I had these patterns of behavior and because uh, when we're children, we often look to others and listen to others' interpretation of us and what, you know, their behavior in regard to what we're doing. Um, I allowed other people's interpretations of how I was behaving or in the things I was doing and not doing to really define me. And I, you know, so I internalized those verbal messages and really start started to believe and feel deeply that I was just a shy person and there was something inherently wrong with me that I couldn't change um, and that I had no, you know, I was powerless to change who I was. And so I was resigned to feeling this, feeling this deep sense of fear, not always living in accordance with my values. Um, 
And this, you know, those, those messages that I received and then the messages I began to just repeat to myself as, you know, our brains tend to do, um, instilled in me this deep sense of fear and shame and um, that created walls around me that, you know, kept me from being able to share myself fully with others and then kept me from allowing others to, you know, come into my world and share themselves fully with me. <clears throat> The other, you know, the other issue and the other challenge that this really brought up for me was in regard to living this life of, filled with fear was that it, in reflection, not in the moment, because I didn't identify it as such, but in reflection, I've been able to see that by allowing to let the fear that I felt to guide my decision making, there are many times that I made poor or in a, inadequate decisions for myself and for those in my family and that I cared about. Um, and, you know, there's nothing that I can do to change those things, but it's been really eye-opening to be able to reflect back on the patterns of behavior and the decisions that I've made along the way and, and reflect upon what it was that was going on inside my brain and my body that, um, that evoked certain responses over others that would have been, um, that would have led me down a different path. And so, you know, at the, at the end of the day, as I think about the, the way that I have allowed fear to take control of my life and, um, control my decision-making, um, the, the thing that comes to the forefront or the, you know, the verbal behavior for me that comes to the forefront is that I truly felt, feel as though I, you know, lived a life up to this point during, in which I felt very sad and lost and lonely. And that doesn't mean that there haven't been times and in, uh, in big periods of my time where I've experienced joy and connection and love and um, understanding. Um, but there was always this undercurrent of just, sadness and um, you know, directionlessness. So today's pivot that we're, that we're focusing on is that final pivot is the action pivot. And what this is going to lead into is, a, is the um, culminating activity for this entire course, which is the development of a personal strategic action plan, which I call a PSAP. This isn't something that's, you know, published in literature. It's, um, you know, strategic action plans are something, many are things that are done for businesses and for personal development. And so this is, this is how we're going to take everything that we've worked on, all the thing, all the skills that we've learned, all the strategies that we've practiced, um, and commit it, commit it to paper. Um, because when we, if we just have a plan in our head and don't have anything on paper, it can be easy to stray from the plan or, you know, stray from the plan. And so by being able to commit our actions to paper and create a plan that guides us for a long, longer period of time, and what we'll be looking at is a 10-year period, um, we can be more confident that we will that we'll be able to stay on track and stay on path with our plan. <clears throat> so the the major the major yearning that the action pivot focuses on is this yearning and striving for competence. And so as humans, th this is not something that we, that we have to learn as, throughout our life, um, but it is something that is an, you know, part of our, you know, part of our genetic makeup or that you see in babies and small children is that, you know, that striving for competence to do things over and over and over again until it is perfected. Um, but without, um, without some 
guidance and adherence to some value set for those actions, those are striving for competence can sometimes and often does turn into a fear of failure. And so as we're striving and pushing and pushing and pushing, we over time develop other kind of behavior patterns like workaholism and perfectionism in which we you know, push ourselves to the nth degree without necessarily a bigger understanding of the, of the bigger picture um, and um, end up in a place where many of us have found ourselves, which is you know, the, the impetus for these courses and why this work is so important, um, because many of us have you know, found ourselves taking this, this, um, uh, this tendency to strive for competence, paired with a fear of failure, not wanting to, you know, not wanting to be seen as incompetent or failing, um, <clears throat> that drives us to put all of our energy and all of our resources into this one area, which looks like workaholism and perfectionism, which often causes us to let go of and avoid other things in our life. Um, which then leads to this feeling of burnout or, you know, I'm tapped out, I've used up all my resources, I'm out of energy, I'm out of time, I'm out of money, I'm out, you know, I'm just like, I'm, I'm done, my I'm empty, and we're you know, just running on fumes, um, which can create this pattern of behavior that we call procrastination or inaction or just that feeling and that general sense of just trudging along through life. But as we develop our psychological flexibility skills related to diffusing from the negative, gaining a better sense of perspective, a sense of ourselves and our, and the, and our place in, in the world and a sense of others and their place of the world and in the world and their perspective. Um, we clarified our values. Um, we've be, you know, learned skills to become more present and aware of where we are in, kind of in, the, in relation to our um, values. As we build up those skills, and we, we enhance and um, improve upon those value-driven habits, we tend to become more flexible and our lives tend to become more balanced because we are more able to adequately um, allocate our resources across the value areas that are important in our lives so we're not constantly um, dedicating all of our resources to one area which leaves us feeling empty and not engaging in behaviors that will fill us back up and recharge our batteries, if you will. So when we've developed those skills, the um, psychological flexibility skills, and we've committed to action, we've developed a plan, we've committed it to paper, we've, we are um, actively engaging um, in an open and centered way. So when we're open to our experiences in life, we're centered in the here and now, we're actively engaged um, in behaviors which are um, in alignment with our values. That leads us to a place and brings us to a place where we're more able to make better decisions. And when we're more able to make better decisions and pivot towards what matters and you know have a more um, flexible sense of being in, in our day-to-day -day lives, we're more able to make better decisions, which in the end is more likely to lead us to living a life that where, in which we can fulfill our potential as humans and as individuals 
um, and create more peace in our lives and the lives of those in, around us who we, who we care about and who we want to positively impact. So in the, um, in a liberated mind, this is the, this is the statement related to, or the final question related to the action pivot. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I will just, I'll just read it because it is something that I want to, for myself, I want to commit to memory. So when I find myself in those times struggling to do things, um, struggling to stay on track, committed to action. This is a, you know, a verbal um, behavior pattern that I can engage in that might help, that might help me self-coach myself through those challenging times. So, um, so based on a distinction between you as a conscious being, so you as yourself in context um, and the story so the distinction between yourself as a conscious being and the story that mind your mind tells you who you are so your conceptualized self versus your transcendent self in this time and situation are you willing to experience your experience as they are so that just that's that idea of accepting what is for what it is not what your mind says what they not what your mind says they are what your dictator within says is happening but actually what is happening observable and measurable fully and without needless defense and direct your attention to creating or sorry direct your attention and effort to creating larger and larger habits of behavior that reflect your chosen values so are you able to be here and now in this moment, knowing who you are, accepting things as they come and being able to continue taking action, even in the face of those challenges, even in the face of the negative verbal behavior that, um, that our dictator within um, fills us with? Can we stay focused and direct our attention on doing the work that we want to do, engaging in the behaviors that are reflective of our values and continuing to drive the bus, continuing to keep our hands on the wheel in spite of all of those things happening. Okay, I'm ready, I'm ready to say yes and answer yes to that question. Something happened the other day that I was really, um, it, it struck me so deeply because it it was different it was a different feeling and it was a different experience than i've had before um and so i wanted to share that experience with you all um because it brought to life for me this lesson completely so yesterday i um needed to have a conversation with someone in and advocate for my own self and my own family's needs. And it was, um, it was a little nerve wracking. And I, you know, I started to get that sense of anxiety and the, um, you know, okay, well, I'm going to be asking for, I'm going to be asking this person for something that they may or may not say yes to, but I have a clear rationale for why, you know, why we need these things and how it will help us and kind of what the bigger issue is. And so I had rehearsed what I wanted to say and I had planned out um, what it was, you know, the message I wanted to deliver and how I wanted to deliver it and, um, you know, utilize some mindfulness exercises to get myself more in the present moment, not, you know, not thinking about um, the problems that I'm trying to address and not worrying about what the answer was going to be because the answer could be yes or the answer could be no, but I still needed to take a chance and I still needed to ask that question and have that conversation. And in the past, what I have experienced is when I, you know, go into these situations, 
I have gone in there with an idea of what I wanted to say, but that underlying fear that, you know, the anxiety, those feelings of anxiety that um, were evoked in my body caused me to kind of um, give up more easily or stray from, from my original intent or not fully deliver my message, um, you know, and, you know, second guess and stumble over myself and just give up. But yesterday was different. And it, like, I, I felt the difference, which was, you know, as, as I've become um, more aware of myself and my action patterns and the physiological responses that I'm having and the thoughts that I'm having in relation to those phys- physiological responses. And I know how that tends to um, shape my own behavior. I was able to, in that moment, you know, clearly deliver my message. Here's what I, here's what I, here's the issue that I'm facing. And these are, this is the, this is what I need from you. Um, or this is what I'm hoping to get, get permission to do in order to, um, you know, overcome this challenge in, in our lives. Um, so I was able to clearly state that. And then the response back to me wasn't a, an affirmative yet, like, yep, no problem. We, you've got this. You can have everything you want. It, you know, it was her, her response back to me was essentially, you know, I'm not the decision maker here. And so I need to talk to somebody. I understand what you're saying. I see your perspective. I think, you know, there might be something that we can do to help, but I can't, I can't give you an affirmative answer. And where in the past, that negative, you know, that kind of perceived negative response, okay, that's not, you know, if it's not a yes, it's a no, never, ever happening, um, would tend to um, evoke this, you know, that um, physiological, just, you know, like um, fear response, where then I would, you know, shut down, it's more of that uh, freeze and flee, uh, or evoke a, like a defensive uh, response. So, you know, getting more passionate or, you know, forceful in my, um, plea for support. Um, I was able to just sit with it and listen and be open and be actively engaged and hear what she had to say. And, you know, I was able to respond back in a calm and clear manner that, you know, even six months ago, I, I can't, I can't say that I would have responded that way or that I would have, wouldn't have, that I would have had a different physiological response. And so that to me was, you know, just one data point for myself, which um, is demonstrating to me that the work that I've been doing, the skills that I've been developing, the, the, um, you know, the, the planning that I've been doing has really been making a difference in my own ability and confidence to demonstrate these skills more fluently. And then also um, being able to get feedback from the other person that I had never, I, I've never really had this response before because I, I was changing my behavior right? So I was able to be more calm, clear, and not, and approach her from a non-defensive standpoint. And she was able to thank me, which, which felt weird, but it felt, but good at the same time, just be, it was weird just because it was different. Um, She was able to say to me, you know, like, thank you. Like, thank you for coming to me and trusting me with this information and clearly expressing what it is that you need um, and also understanding that, you know, there's, there's more information that I need to gather. There's more work that I need to do. And while I can't give you what you want right now, or I can't just, I can't say yes, because I'm not the one who is in charge of making these decisions. I hear you. I understand you. I accept you. And I appreciate you coming to me. And that, like the feeling, that sense of just peace and relief that came over me at that moment was so profound 
because it, I was like, oh, that's what it feels like. That's what it feels like to take a chance, communicate clearly, stay calm, not get defensive. And then, you know, even though I'm not getting the response that I, I want, you know, right now, um, the door is still open. And that was a really, you know, that was a really important um, experience for me to go through to see for myself the power of the skills that I'm learning and how they are, um, how they are applying, or how I'm able to more fluently apply them. And I'm getting positive reinforcement <laughs> for that, which is then going, you know, going to strengthen those behaviors and um, make it where it's more um, easy, fluent, efficient for me to engage in those behaviors in the future. So the three objectives for this lesson today are to talk about developing our strategic action plans for attaining the goals that we've defined throughout the lessons, to discuss the ethical obligations that we have as behavior analysts or other professionals in regard to engaging in personal reflection to address our, bar our personal barriers to effective practice. Um, our obligation to accept and provide corrective feedback, and our obligation to effectively disseminate behavioral science. What the exercise, and then the um, final objective is to create a plan for using BST to teach someone else in your life to um, either in, uh, you utilize one of the skills or some of the skills that we've been working on um, or to support you in developing in um, implementing your own action plan.